There's one important topic that I want to cover before I continue, and that is colors. So far, I always use the tkinter default colors. Those are, for example, red, white, blue, pink, orange, yellow. I think there are about 10 in total, which, well, is quite limiting. To create any color that you want, you would use what is called a hexadecimal value system. It sounds complicated, but it really isn't that bad. Hexadecimal numbers go from 0 to F. That is going to sound confusing, but the numbers look like this. We go from 0 all the way to 9, and then we continue with A, B, C, D, E, and F, with 0 being the lowest number and F being the highest number. Basically, just imagine that these letters here are numbers in this kind of numbering system. The reason for that is that with the system, you can express a much greater range of values with fewer numbers. You see it quite often, actually, when you work with computers. To turn this into a color, you have to combine three of these numbers, with the first value standing for red, the second one for green, and the final one for blue. This might look something like this. We have 0, 8, and F. This means that we have zero amount of red, because zero is the lowest value, and in this case it means we have the absence of red. Next up, we have the 8. This one is roughly in the middle of the system, which means we have more or less 50% of green color, although this is not an exact number here. Finally, we have F, and this F stands for blue and is the highest number in here, which means we have 100% of the blue color. Finally, to indicate that we are using hexadecimal numbers, you want to add the hashtag symbol in front of this. If you add this into tkinter as a string, tkinter is going to recognize this as a color. Let's have a look. For the code, I am importing tkinter and ttk, I am creating a window, then I'm creating three labels and place them right away using the pack method. Finally, as always, I'm running main loop so we can see the app. This is giving us an empty window because none of the labels has any text. Although they don't need any kind of text because I only care about the colors here. To give it a color, as always, we need, for example, a background. For this, so far, we always use something like red. With that, we have a red background color. However, now that we have learned about hexadecimal colors, we can set the background to the color I used was hashtag 0, 8, and F. If I run this now, we are getting a very bluish color. This should make sense because we have no amount of red and we have a huge amount of blue. That way, you would expect this color here to be quite blue. Although, since we do have a certain amount of green, that's the 8, this is not going to be a complete blue. I can actually demonstrate this if I copy all of this. I could, for example, change the 8 to an F and the F to a 0. What would we expect now for the color? Well, if I run this again, we are getting a pure green. Because for this one, we have no red and we have no blue. The only color that we have is green, and we have the full amount of green. So with that system, you could create basically any kind of color. Now, it's going to be really annoying to just experiment with each of these values, and nobody actually does that. Instead, what people are doing is they use some kind of editor, and they all have some kind of color picker in build. For example, here I am in Photoshop. If I click on the color, you can see down here, we have a hexadecimal color system, although this one looks a tiny bit different compared to what I have just used. Instead of three colors, we have six colors. Let's talk about that one really quick. Hexadecimal color values are always either three or six digits long. The one we have just seen looked like this. We have one digit for red, one digit for green, and one digit for blue. Besides that, we could also specify two digits for each color. Two for red, two for green, and two for blue. This second system here is a lot more precise because we have twice as many values for the red color, for example, as we would have in this system. Which gives you, well, a whole lot more options. When you use basically any color editor online, 
this is the system they are using. They basically always have six colors, but you don't have to use it. If you have a simple app, this system here is perfectly fine. Back in Photoshop, you can see right now we have FF, so we have a pure red color, and then 00 for green and 00 for blue. If I move around, you can see these colors change and you can create basically any kind of color value. In total, I think this gives you about 16 million options. Definitely enough for any kind of style that you want. If you don't have Photoshop, you don't have to worry because Google has a color picker inbuilt as well. And here, you can simply move a color around and get basically any kind of hex value that you want. This is the value you're always looking for. Which means I could literally just copy the value from this, return to my code editor, and paste the color in here, run the code, and there we go. We have the same color we just created, which makes all of this quite efficient because you can now pick literally any color that you want. Let's do an exercise on this one. I want you guys to create a brownish color using hexadecimal values. You could use a color picker for that, Although, just to practice the system, try to figure out the numbers without using an editor. It should be fairly easily doable, but both approaches are going to be fine. Pause the video now and try to figure this one out. Let me copy the final label here and place it below the exercise. For this one, I want to work with just three digits. Let's start with F, 0, and 0. This is going to give us a pure red, because we only have F and then 0 for green and 0 for blue. Which means we have a pure red. This we now have to make darker to get some kind of brown. The best way of doing that is by increasing the amount of green. Instead of 0, let's go with an A. If I run this now, this is giving us a bit of an orangey color. If I reduce the amount of green, let's say to a 6, this is definitely getting brownish. Although right now it's more of a dark orange. If I put this to a green, we are definitely getting closer. I guess if I increase this a tiny bit more to a 5, this gets close enough to at least a light brown. And if I reduce the amount of red from an F to, let's say, C, this is very much a brown color. Doing all of this inside of Google gives you much easier results. You can just click on a brownish color here, something like this, and you have a lot of different brown tones you could work with. Before I move on, there are two more things that I do want to cover, and that is white and black. Right now, we always had a color, but how can we get a white and a black color? Those two are really easily done. I can just copy this. Black is the absence of all colors which means 0, 0, and 0. Running this gives us a black color, and a white color is the opposite. We have every color 100% available, which means F, F, and F. With that, we have white. If you have the same color value for every color, you always get some shade of gray. Let me duplicate this. If I change 0, 0, and 0 to 8, 8, 8, we're getting a grayish color. With that, we have covered all of the colors.